This is CKMS, 102.7 FM in Waterloo Region, RadioWaterloo.ca on the web. Like what you hear? Why not drop a line at www.radiowaterloo.ca Or if you would like to request a song, check out Radio Waterloo on Facebook and Twitter. Or call us at 519-884-2567. You are listening to the new 102.7 CKMS-FM. Oh man. What's got you down there, DJ Denim? I'm totally bummed. I never got accepted into my broadcasting program. Aw, buddy. That sucks to hear. Why not? Just applied a little too late this year, you know? Yeah, man, I hear ya. But sometimes, life can get bad. But it's not always bad, because here at CKMS, we can help you out. Really? That'd be awesome. Yes, of course, really. We've been serving the community for the past 40 years. That's how long we've been providing a voice for folks like you in our community. Just check out RadioWaterloo.ca and click on the Start a Show tab. Well, thank you, Radio Waterloo. CKMS-FM. Rockin' Waterloo. This is Mr. K, the host of My Audio Face. From Cambridge, Ontario, and you're listening to the Underground Sound Project, right here on 102.7 CKMS Radio Waterloo. Kishina Waterloo and listeners from around the world. This is CKMS Wide World of Motorsports right here on 102.7 CKMS FM. The sound of the community for the past 40 years. Just looking at the time a little bit, it's just shortly after 1 p.m. and we're live until 2 p.m. Our second episode of Wide World of Motorsports. Today is Monday, February 26, 2018. And this is DJ JD. Add me up on Xbox Live. Check out the show page CKMS WWOM on Facebook and Twitter, and as well as RadioWaterloo.ca worldwide and mobile friendly. Check us out, Rogers 946, and of course 102.7 in the 519. This is Wide World of Motorsports, uh, bringing the track to the community. For uh, the past couple of years so far. And I want to give thanks to all the new followers and uh, people who liked our page. I'm going to give a shout out, obviously, to the boys, Slayer and Parker. But, of course, some new people. Johnny Lee Dixon, Elliot, Linda Mood, Justin Chandler, Kenny Marshall, um, Jamie Decorsi, Tyler McMahon. I wonder if he's related to Vince McMahon. Tommy Matthews, Thomas Lawrence. Um, and of course, uh, oh, even got to give a shout out to Stephen Ellis, my buddy, Stephen Ellis from Can Race, one of the other guys that, uh, are, are in the, the trenches with us when we go to NASCAR races. So we'd like to thank everybody for liking CKMS Wide World of Motorsports. The first week is great. We kicked off the series at the World Center of Racing, which was fantastic. One of the best experiences I've ever had in my whole life. Still, I was just about a week ago. Uh, I was in a hotel. Um, and actually, about a week ago right now, we were on the beach. The Daytona Beach course at Ponce Inlet. The racing's first turn. or sorry, Yeah, the racing's um, northern restaurant. It is a fantastic restaurant. And... Um, and you should go there. It's great. Lots of cool history. It's like a museum. Uh, we went. That's where it all started. Uh, the bootleggers would take their cars down. Uh, and it's not only that. Manufacturers, motorcycles, they would take their stuff down there and see how fast they could go. The sand is, uh, a certain part of the sand is hard and, um, and it's pretty 
good surface to go see how fast you can go on. You got lots of space to do it. And we got lots of pictures. You can check us out. Uh, check that out in CKMS Wide World Motorsports Facebook page. But yeah, you know, it's fantastic to go where it all started. And um, now that we went to the Streamline Hotel where uh, NASCAR, where Big Bill France formed NASCAR with all the uh, promoters of the tracks um, and made NASCAR, formed NASCAR. Um, and, and it is to what it is now. We went there, and it's cool to be able to go to where it all started, and to be able to also see such a historic, such a great weekend of racing. Uh, we saw in a race that produced seven cautions for 35 laps and left 21 trucks running at the finish. Shawnee Sauter held off Justin Haley by 0 0.098 seconds at Daytona National Speedway to win the last Friday's Extra Energy Resources 250. The season opener of the Camping World Truck Series saw to grab the lead from the pole winner David Gilliland on lap 92 of 100 and stayed out from the rest of the way. The victory was Sauter's third at Daytona and 18th in his career. The 2016 Series champion dedicated the win to his crew chief John Shear, whose wife Chandra Shear passed away in December. The race performance of both driver and crew was impeccable. Good on them. And uh, we saw what was the one of the basically the closest finish in national series history last Saturday's power shares QQQ 300 at Daytona International Speedway Tyler Reddick blocked uh, with laps left and held on to win the closest win ever uh, in a two lap dash that ended a race that reached new levels of ridiculousness Reddick edge series veteran Elliot Sadler by a few feet and a photo finish during the fifth overtime of the Xfinity Series opener. Video clearly showed Reddick slightly ahead of the line, however, the side-by-side -side finish was so close that the NASCAR scoring system didn't register a margin of victory for Reddick over Sadler. NASCAR said the zero second margin was the closest since electronic scoring debuted in 1993. That's, that's crazy. 25 years closest finish that it's been officially scored, uh, but obviously one of the closest in history. Uh, and then for that Xfinity race, we saw Pinty Series champion Alex LeBay, uh, who was a rookie in the Xfinity Series, qualified the, the number 26 Can Am Kappa Cyclops gear, Wooly Seafood of Team AM Prime Racing of Mario Gosselin in 22nd place. A stunning performance in itself. Labe drove well, using his head to stay in touch with the leaders, not losing a lap, and staying away from trouble. His crew chief, the experienced Mario Goslin, expected the race to end on lap 120, as scheduled, and decided not to fill the tank completely during the last stop. Therefore, he ran into some chaos, and the race lasts an additional 23 laps, uh, and his engine just ran out moments before the field got to the green to be the final green white checker of the race. Fortunate to see that happen, but uh, and also I tried to find his scanner frequency at the track, could not find it. Should have got the little scanner page thing, but I don't know what was going on there. Um, but uh, to wrap off the whole weekend, uh, it was a great weekend. Um, talked to a cool, some cool people there at the track, a lot of very friendly people. Um, had a great time. And it all ended off with a day, and I, I love day to night transition races. It was fantastic, and especially only that vacation 20 years ago from the date Dale Earnhardt Sr. won his only Daytona 500. Austin Dillon was just seven year old who was actually in victory lane with him uh, when Dale Earnhardt won. The 27 year old Dillon won the 60th running of the Daytona 500 in overtime on Sunday after last Sunday after spinning and passing Eric Almore on the final lap. It's the second wind of Dylan's career, and that means he'll be heading back to the playoffs to compete for a NASCAR championship later this season. And we ended up seeing uh, mostly a dominance for Kurt Busch in Stage 1, and uh, there was a big wreck. They were wrecking like he was the finish by the end of the stage, and uh, that ended up Alex Bowman getting ahead of that. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of big contenders in that wreck. Um, Eric Jones got a little bit loose, hit the wall, and he included six, uh, seven time champion in Jimmy Johnson. Ty Dillon, Daniel Soros, Byron, um, Blaney somehow got through that. 
Trix Jr., Stenhouse Jr., and Kyle Larson were all officially involved with the wreck. Uh, there's also another big wreck in stage two late in the second stage. Chase Elliott was spinning on the back stretch, and he hit. He did a hard lick on the wall. You can see even see the retainer wall just bend in. It took out Danica Patrick, which was her last start. Casey Kane, Michael McDonald, David Reagan, and the Vegas favorite of the race, Brackususki, in the process. Kevin Harvick also took a considerable amount of damage in the wreck. But for Patrick, the wreck was a career ending. The Daytona 500 was the final last car race of Patrick's career. For five series, seasons, she earned seven top 10 finishes and one pole coming during the 2013 edition of the Great American Race. The 35-year-old is the first woman to lead laps on the green in the Cup Series, as well as lead a lap and qualify on the pole. Um, Harvick attempted to come back on the track after the wreck, but timed out on pit road and was done for the day. Later on the stage, Stenhouse Jr. spewed steam out of his car, but was able to bring it down pit road and get back on track. But uh, the field was running single file 10 laps to go as Rod and Blaney, of course, dominated most of stage by the final stage um, and continued to pace the field after leading over 100 laps when William Byron went spinning near the start finish line to bring up the caution and set up the finish. On the restart, Blaney shuffled the lead with the Denny Hamlin in 2017 day 2500 winner Kurt Busch before the big one came down. And apparently, Kurt Busch said, Blaney, was the one who blocked him. I don't know how you can block if you're in front of the guy behind you. I don't know how the guy behind you can block and then wreck you out. Kind of looked like Kurt Busch could have kind of laid back on the high side, but that didn't happen. Ended up basically uh, sending him into a tailspin and taking out him along with full start Alex Bowman, De Benedetto, Stenhouse Jr., Newman, and 2017 Cup champ Martin Truex Jr. The massive wreck sent the race into overtime. Hamlin the Fed led the field to green in overtime, but was passed by Amor on the back scratch, and of course, resulting in what was the famous finish everyone debating. Was that just rubbing racing or not? But it looked like Dylan, um, you know, was just got into him a little bit, but it wasn't intentional by the way things looked. And then I ended up uh, getting a clear win, dashed at the finish line, making another three car in victory lane. And it was great. We were there for that, and it was fantastic. Still, still steaming off that that race. It was so cool. Um, but as I said the last week when I recorded the series premiere, I said we would get to this part this week. So we're we're also going to take just a little break here. We're going to listen to a couple songs uh, for everyone to get driving to here, and then we're going to get later on into the end of the show. We're going to talk about what happened this past weekend at Atlanta in Hampton, Georgia. Let's uh, let's get to some music here. We're going to play some at Ted Nugent, Stranglehold, Deep Purple, and uh, just don't touch that dial. You're listening to CKMS Wide World of Motorsports right here on 102.7 CKMS FM and at the 519 and, of course, RadioWaterloo.ca slash listen worldwide and mobile friendly. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.